Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. I'm going to go to Hassan and Holland in the next segment, so stay there. Frank, John, Mark, Prospero, Donna, Truth Raider, we'll get to all of you right now. Let's go ahead and uh, talk to Truth Raider in Oregon. Go ahead, Truth Raider. Hey, buddy, how's Club 40 treating you? <laughs> hey, 40 is the same as 39 for all I'm concerned. It's good. Love it. <laughs> we'll try Club 50. I got a lot to talk to you about, but brother, here in Oregon, where I'm at, in the Portland, Oregon area, we have a great Ukraine population here. So I, I've gone around and I've talked to a couple of them. I have a couple of bankers, bank tellers that are from the Ukraine, and they're quite concerned with the situation. As a matter of fact, a couple of them have left the area here in uh, trying to find out what they can do to help their relatives, you know, get out of harm's way. Well, so what's their take on it? I mean, are they pro-Russia or pro-West, or are they just not wanting a war? They're just not wanting a war, for one thing. They're, most of them are pro-West. I mean, they, they like the, the way that the, what the system that they already had in place. So they're they're very, very upset with Russia trying to reconfiscate or take back what is already was separated. And already they were seceded from Russia al already in the first place. So they're concerned that that's that's their position on it. It's it's a mixed variety of things, but they're certainly very concerned about their relatives who are still over there. Well, yeah, they got a lot of real beefs with the Russians, and just the issue is NATO started all this and overthrow the elected government. So that's the larger issue. I appreciate your call. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call, another call from Oregon. Let's go to Mark in Oregon. Mark, you're on the air. Hey, Alex. Hey, buddy. Hey, Alex. Um, doing a marvelous job of covering this like nobody else is. Just wanted to... Uh, express my appreciation for all the great information. And uh, before I just get on to the, a quick bit of information I have related to the Russian situation, I wanted to just give you my impression of Glenn Beck. I tune into him for 20 or 30 seconds at the most, uh, once in a blue moon. And you know that old saying, like you feel like you need to take a shower after you've been around someone? I, he, he's just a very disagreeable energy. And uh, I certainly sympathize with you. Well, now, listen, like, I'm only bringing up the Glenn Beck thing because, I mean, he's like saying i want a violent overthrow and and i and i want to you know basically kill people and it's very dangerous and it's meant to demonize me and it's a white house talking point coming directly out of rachel maddow and media matters so what is he doing putting out white house talking points yeah he, he's surely trying to get you off the airwaves and uh he's just uh, just a real piece of scum but alex i i wanted to uh mention to you that something that really hasn't been covered so far in the situation ongoing in russia and that is if the russians have some of the if not the top physicist and uh electronic uh field related scientists in the world who develop their weapon systems and one product of the weapon systems that they uh developed is called a cavitation torpedo which can travel at mach 3 around 2000 miles per hour underwater creating a, a, a bubble, a, a waterless space in front of it that it travels through. And there's nothing that can stop it that the Americans have, and the Americans don't have it, to my understanding. Another thing, Greg Ebertson, Ebertson was on Pastor Butch this past Friday, and he said a Russian plane came over a U.S. destroyer in the Black Sea. Uh, when it got over the destroyer at low altitude, all of the electronics on the destroyer went off. It became a dead ship. Well, no, no, I mean, absolutely, the Russians do have, well, look, they brought down a drone just a month ago with uh, scramblers and that is what and that's why they've got jets going into ukraine right now is i'll guarantee you they're practicing electronic warfare on those uh, different vehicles and things absolutely no i mean here's the deal the russians will fight back and people keep saying well they're taking part of eastern ukraine you've got an unelected government running around murdering everybody and the russians really know that nato's coming up to their doorstep so I don't know what Russia is expected to do. I'm not romanticizing Russia here. It's just that NATO started this, and if you start the fight, you don't have the moral high ground. Appreciate your call. We're going to talk to Hassan, Frank, John, Prospero, Donna, and others. The toll-free number to join us, folks. 
is 877-789-2539. Wide open phones. Wide open phones. We'll be right back. Stay with us. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Obama loves you. Obama. Obama. We play the songs that sound And in your firearms. Families aren't good. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel Castro took the guns. Hugo Chavez took the guns. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. The Republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. The answer to 1984 is 1776. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. You know, I'm not taking sides in the Ukraine, Russia, NATO situation. I just know that NATO and the EU three months ago, three and a half months ago, when they wouldn't vote to join the EU and be sucked dry, overthrew the elected government of Ukraine. Now they're going into Russian ethnic areas attacking people with helicopters and tanks, claiming Russia's doing something and Russia's threatening to invade to protect uh, uh, you know, Russian uh, people. And I don't have a side on uh, the, quote, racist Clippers owner, Donald Sterling, and the fact that he's a Democrat. And then his girlfriend recorded him saying, stop running around with the basketball players. But when you see Al Sharpton, the hardcore racist, race pimp, riot promoter, FBI rat cocaine dealer, reportedly, running around saying this guy shouldn't be able to own a team. Now they'll accuse you of being a racist. And Alex can't be on their air. He might be a racist. Or you can't own a car dealership. You might be a racist. Or you can't own a restaurant. You can't work here because it's a new witch hunt. I mean, what about all these rappers, these black rappers that are so racist against Hispanics or whites or anybody else or other black folks for that matter or whatever? I mean, are they allowed to put out their rap records? Of course they are. First Amendment means you can say what you want. If you want to boycott the Clippers, go ahead. I want to boycott this guy's girlfriend recording him. Man, what, I mean, what is this new thing where, where you violate people's confidence in their house and then you're some type of hero? Unbelievable. I mean, this, this woman will never get a job anywhere again, probably. No one will ever have her around him privately again. Whatever happened to loyalty? Whatever happened to privacy? I mean, I'll guarantee you, you, you go around recording just, you know, random f five out of ten black folks, you're going to hear racial comments against people. You go record white people, you're going to hear some of that too. But a lot of it's just talk. You're going to hear a lot of them. There are a lot of mean people out there. There are a lot of country clubs that if you, don't, you didn't go to college with everybody, I don't care how white you are, you're not welcome. You're some famous black golf player. They're going to want you in the country club. It's elitism is what it is. But that's a side issue. The reason I raised the headline, racist Clippers owner Donald Sterling is a Democrat, National Review, that's up on DrudgeReport.com and Infowars.com, is because President Obama has now responded. 
uh, saying that alleged remarks are incredibly offensive. Well, yeah, but they're, they're private comments. It's incredibly offensive that she recorded him. He's obviously jealous that she's running around with a bunch of guys who are a lot younger and better looking than he is. And he isn't saying, I hate all these people. He's saying, you know what? We're elitist. I'm the owner. You don't want to be running around with the players. That is standard elite talk, ladies and gentlemen. Standard. Standard. I mean, in elitist circles, they don't even care if you've got $500 million in the bank. In some elitist circles, it's, it's what degrees you have. Like a lot of academics don't have any money, but they don't want you in their circle if you don't have five PhDs or whatever. It's the same deal. But the point is, we're on the edge of war with Russia. Russia's saying they may invade, and we're talking about race issues right now. That's why I wanted to talk about that, because I see Hassan, Hassan in Holland, he likens the Russia situation to the Trayvon Martin case. How do you do that? Uh, welcome to the airwaves, Hassan. Hello? Yes, sir, you're on the air. Oh, I dream about that, that they are like Cain and Abel. You know Cain and Abel? Yes, from the Bible. From the Bible. What is this, the end of the world or something? Did you saw how uh, Trayvon Martin was sitting on top of uh, George Zimmerman? No, uh, so are you saying that the West has basically overthrown the government, they're sitting on top of the Russians, pushing them up to the edge of their border, trying to push the Russians out of Ukraine, who've been there forever. Are, are, are you likening the West as, as, uh, as Trayvon Martin on top of George Zimmerman? No, I'm liking them to, do you know that they always, Cain killed Abel, and now Abel kills Cain. So you're That's just, oh, oh, no, no, I get it. The Russians have done bad things to the Ukrainians 70 years ago, so now they're going to do it back. Yeah. Good point. They have to stand their ground, they have to stand their ground against uh, Obama, who is the Cain. Very interesting analogy. Thanks for the call from Holland. Frank in New York, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thank you for taking my call, Alex. How are you? I'm all right. What do you think about all this? Uh, it's crazy, but I want to make three points. First of all, I told you last year about Glenn Beck. He's, a, he's nothing but a piece of trash. He really is. I'm not going to talk about it anymore, but he's a piece of trash. But And, and second, um, as far as his NBA stuff, don't you think this is a kind of a kind of suspicious that actually happened right now? Don't you think this is probably a smoke screen just to take the attention of what's going on? Well, yeah, I wonder why she went in and recorded him, because he sounds pretty nice. He's like, I love minorities. I love the players, blah, blah, blah. But you're, you're my girlfriend. You don't hang around with them. And then she keeps going, what, you're racist? And he goes, no, that's not what I'm saying, blah, blah, blah. But the media is only playing little excerpts of it. And I'm not defending what he's saying. The point is, he should just say, I'm an elitist pig. You're my woman. Don't hang around with other guys. She spins it as I'll hang out with whoever I want. Uh, and, and so... But, yeah, I wonder who told her to do it. I bet it was a lawyer or something. Mm-hmm. Yes, I have suspicions about that. But, and third of all, just remember this, Alex. In the Bible, it states that there'll be rumors of wars, and these days shall pass. So I don't think God has, has this in plan for this. You know, you know what I'm trying to get at. No, I agree. I mean, there's wars and rumors of wars is the quote. And I don't think this is going to turn into World War III. Uh, I don't, but, but the thing is, there's a chance. The Russians rolled mobile ICBMs in in 2008 when NATO was attacking their border and said, we will launch weapons in one hour at NATO bases. And NATO pulled out. So NATO's mad and I guess thinks they can have a better civil war this time in Ukraine. What do you think? I, I just feel, no, you're absolutely correct. I just feel that God has, has his own way of doing things. I don't think this is going to happen. I, I'm, I'm a Christian, so I, I, believe, I have very faithful and that's not going to happen and that's all i want to say to you well god is in control frank and i, I think if god wasn't having his hand of protection over us we wouldn't even be here right now so maybe you're right i hope you're right prospero in pennsylvania if i'm pronouncing that right go ahead what's your take yeah. on the uh, this situation uh i just want to say that i think that in fact and i'll let i'll get off quickly and let you unpack this but i think it's more likely that it is ww3 uh, warranted by the fact that you have Iran in the balance, Syria in the balance, Russia's holding that up, the end of the petrodollar uh, in the balance, the Western banking system uh, in the balance, the bond market in the balance, the U.S. dollar. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And there's not enough time left on the clock for them to... Uh, 
uh, wrap this up without getting something started. I considered it possibly being a Davos sort of a group.